Hello, welcome to Manipil. Uh, another follow-up on my video on the trolley problem, which is basically ethics slash morality. Uh, I had a few uh, additional thoughts that sort of arrived after doing uh, these old thoughts, but they are sort of somehow connected to the trolley problem or my discussion of it. And that is that there's one thing that has arrived to me while I have done a lot of deconstructions of people thinking they have arrived at a, a bridging of Hume's Israel gap, or at least trying to deal with what he's trying to say. And that is, that is the first part. I'm, uh, that's another part I'm, I'm coming to later, which is another thing that I've been uh, wondering about uh, concerning ethics, and which is, who are you to boss people around? Right? Who are you to tell people anything about your observations or your judgment of whether or not something is moral or not moral, right? Who are you to tell somebody else, right? But at, at the foundation of Hume's, uh, what Hume points out is maybe rather that the, the, the deepest problem is, who are you to tell me what to do? It's like, yes, I've been having some thinking. I have ontologies and epistemology and uh, notions about morality. Therefore, I can boss you around and tell you should do this, you should do that, right? How does that follow? Does it follow? I've been doing some thinking, therefore I can boss you around. Now I'm saying boss you around, right? But it's basically it, morality is a sophist trick or being used as such to tell you I am validated in my bossing you around. I have morality on my side. I can tell you what to do, right? How does that fucking follow, right? How does it follow? I have been doing some thinking, if that is even the case, right? I have been doing some thinking. Now I can boss you around. It doesn't follow, right? It's stupid, right? And that's also one of the things that the trolley problem uh, illuminates, actually, which is, I am the god of situations. You there, down there, little peasant at the lever, you have to decide. I have said there are these choices and this is going on and this is going to happen. You have two choices. It's bad or worse. Which one are you taking, right? Fuck off, man, right? Anybody attempting to use this as any kind of starting point for morality or ethics is freaking crazy and stupid and caught up in their own mind tricks, right? It's never going to fly. And if it does, it will be dangerous, let me tell you, right? Because it will be some kind of authoritarian, uh, utilitarian uh, set of people who want to boss people around, right? It doesn't follow. I've been doing some thinking, now I can boss you around. It doesn't follow, right? That's a huge problem in ethics. Ethics and moralizing has always been a justification for why I can boss you around, right? Why? What is this fetish with justifying you being, you can bossing people around? Get away, man. Fuck off you, right? Don't boss, I don't care how good your ethics is. You don't get to boss me around. I don't care how fucking good your ethics is and your moral principle, how, how, how flying fucking well it is. You don't get to boss me around because I have my own philosophy. I have my own th ethics, right? The other thing is that all ethics and i you know my and there may be maybe some of them that i haven't seen yet right i possibly haven't seen all attempts at moral principles but what what they always do is as far as i'm concerned right they point to saying 
they they violate Hume's thought gap by saying that situation is immoral, right? This situation has immorality to it without saying what it is because they can't. They can't point somewhere and say that color, that sound, that taste is immoral, right? So it can't be empirical. You can't have an, a taste. Oh, this tastes good. This tastes sweet. This tastes sour. Now this tastes immoral, right? Okay, that color is yellow. It's green. It's blue. It, that color is immoral, right? That sound is loud and and it sounds like a drum. Sounds like an elephant. Oh, that sound is immoral, right? You can't arrive. You can't have empirical access to morality. So what is it? It's something you bring to the table, then, right? If it doesn't arrive through the senses, it must be, it must be something that arrives through your body or just from pure imagination. That's what Hume is pointing out. But then if you're saying this situation is immoral, you as the one claiming this situation is immoral, which is the what the trolley problem does. It says this situation, if this happens, there are only two, which is also a fallacy, right? Two, situ two choices, which is two... Uh, Consequences, right? Consequence one is immoral. Consequence two is immoral, right? Otherwise, there wouldn't be a problem. You you are forced into a situation where you can't avoid acting immorally. You're just I acting potentially less immoral according to these kinds of standards that you are sort of being imposed on you, right? The point I'm getting to is if a situation somehow can be labeled as immoral from whatever standard you have, then it implies that the moral principle didn't work. Right? Because moral principles are exactly there to make sure that this shit doesn't happen, right? I'm not sure saying that it won't happen, but they are there to make sure they don't happen. When it has happened, it's no longer, a, you cannot You cannot apply that principle to that new situation that arrived because this the same principle was just violated moments before that. Right? It starts to get into a circuit. Okay, the, the principle didn't apply. Now we got into some immoral situation. Now I keep adding the same principle to the moral situ immoral situation that arrived because the principle either doesn't work or wasn't applied in the first case, or in the prior case, right? That's the violation that the Toronto problem does. It, it says, don't look at what happened over here, where we, you know, quote, or not quote, but implicitly, or without actually dealing with the situation, created something that was immoral. This situation going on before created something immoral, and now you have to fix it, right? Using whatever moral standard you have. So, it, it implicitly appeals to the situation being immoral because, for some reason, either a moral principle wasn't applied or the moral principle didn't work, right? That is the problem. Because you cannot have a moral principle that only works in the case when something, or can only be applied or identified as now it's immoral, now I need to correct using a moral principle, that doesn't work. Because then you always have to wait until it the it's immoral in order to correct it. Rather than what's it called? Um, when, when you uh, make sure that it doesn't happen or try to, what's that called? Um, Oh, I'm looking for a word. Why? Rather than putting on, uh, you know, bandages on, on on the wounds, make sure that the wounds don't happen. It's a call. I'm looking. What it's called? Uh, yeah, not predict. Uh, it's called uh, pre. <laughs> um, precaution, not precaution. Um, whatever. It might pop in in a few moments, right? The. A moral principle is something that adjusts behavior, your behavior, right? So that you don't end up in, an, in a moral situation. So if you are planted there in the trolley problem for one, some way or another, 
you are just observing a situation that you might interpret as immoral or not, right? According to your standards. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it is immoral to somebody else's standard. It might be a, a photo shoot, a, you know, a movie making thing, right? These are just dolls on the track. Of it. How do you know this, right? So you cannot have a moral principle based upon identification of immorality. That is also what Hume says, right? I'm, uh, Hume could be wrong, but I agree with Hume, right? You cannot say, oh, that's immoral. Now I'm going to bust you around, right? It's the bossing you around approach to morality that is dysfunctional. That will inevitably be an appeal to authorities going around checking people and uh, pulling levers and so on, right? The moral principle has to take care of adjusting your behavior such that you don't end up in an immoral situation, whatever that might be defined as, according to the principle, right? So there's a lot of things on, to unpack in, in ethics, which is I can only come up with a principle that I follow because I can't boss people around, right? But if I'm the only one following it, how does that work, right? That's, that's a very deep, deeply settled in, in ethics that, well, I need to convince people that they should do this so everybody does it. That's why people want governments. They want to people to be threatened into submission so we all follow the same rules, which is basically, at the deepest level, it's ethics, right? But you can't have that because then those who are bossing people around are violating the idea of morality because they can only say, now you were immoral, right? And that's what we don't want. We don't want immorality happening here, there, and everywhere in order for some authority to boss people around. We don't want bossing around because we don't want immoral situations to happen, right? So immoral principle is something that goes on before things become immoral. But while philosophers are constantly trying to find ways to point fingers and say, that's immoral. That's on the other side of the equation, right? That's why all the attempts at ethics I have seen don't work because they are based on the idea of identifying immorality. And that's exactly what you don't want, right? You don't want immorality. But if you need immorality in order to be moral, you need to actually have immorality in order to moralize, right? So it's, it works against its own purpose that, this way, right? And actually, uh, if anything, the trolley problem points out these shortcomings of how people understand and approach ethics in order to get to a moral principle. And I would argue that's why n nobody has ever found it yet, because they have the wrong approach to how to do it, right? Okay, see you in the next one.